Hey friends, welcome back to the CNC Auto Channel. I'm your friendly neighborhood mechanic, and today we've got the Cadillac STS we call Frank and Caddy back in the shop. If you don't remember this one, it arrived here dead on arrival and we brought it back to the life. So we decided to give it the name Frank and Caddy. Put a time and set into it, got it back on the road. One of the things that happens when you get a car back on the road after a while is you start to identify additional things that it might need. And that's what's happening with this one. So it's throwing a code, the infamous PO420. And those of you out there that work on cars anytime in your life know that code. That's the bad catalytic converter code. Sometimes it's not the catalytic converters, but in this case, it actually is. So I thought I'd bring you guys along as we swap out the catalytic converters on this 2007 Cadillac. It's got the 3.6 in it. Come on, let's go see what it takes to get new cats on this thing. Here we are up underneath the car, and this will be the passenger side catalytic converter that we actually need to get out of here. And you may be able to see up in there, but uh, we've got a couple of studs screwed into it from above, so we're going to have to come at this one from above, no doubt. Um, but there's also this heat shield on it that we need to get out of the way. So it looks like it's held on by a few 10 millimeter bolts. And then we'll also have to remove that oxygen sensor and a bunch of cobwebs. <laughs> um, but uh, then we'll follow it down here. And we've got a flange here at the back that it's held on with. This one doesn't look too bad as far as that one coming off. So it uh, looks like just up top is really going to be our our problem area when it comes to getting this catalytic converter swapped out. Here's the catalytic converter on the driver's side. It looks like the somebody's been in here cut that flange, so likely this one has been off before. Um, and if we look up inside there, you can see where it's attached to the manifold by a couple of bolts. The other side, the passenger side, didn't have bolts coming through like that with nuts on in this side. I've got everything soaking in some um, uh, liquid wrench. Um, you definitely want to do that with these exhaust parts because they're going to be hard to get apart. And ratcheting wrench, 10 millimeter. Get this heat shield cover bolts off out of our way. Ah, it's a little tight. Hoping it doesn't snap off, but if it does, it's not the end of the world. Those things are not terribly important. <clears throat> really tight. Maybe just snap off here in a minute. Let's see. <clears throat> yep, there it goes. Sure enough, like I said, never it gets a little tight like that, you know. But uh, there's a risk if that bolt's going to break. And sure enough, it did. Still in my wrench here. But uh, as you can see, that's that 10 millimeter that was holding that uh, heat shroud on. Still on the passenger side. I think I'm going to go ahead and break the uh, oxygen sensor loose, if not take it out here. Let's get our oxygen sensor wrench up on there. And, uh, Okay, I'm using one of these kind here. It's really handy. Let's see if I can't get the wrench in here and get a hold of it now. Uh, excuse my reach. Okay, I think I got it in there now. Let's see if we can't break it loose or if it's just going to be a bear. I'll let you guys see. Yeah, it goes. That wasn't too bad. Luckily, it wasn't seized in there too bad. And good thing with these oxygen sensors is once you break them loose, a lot of times they, they'll be uh, really easy to twist out. Let's see if I can do it. Just oh yeah, just by hand even. So that's good. 
and we could probably go up top and unplug this thing um, but uh, they usually only have three or four threads before they come out and uh, you're not gonna knot up the cable that badly in those three or four turns um, before the thing will come out of the hole let's see almost there there it is okay all right there she is oxygen sensors out of the way heat shield bolt is out from down here can't really grab anything else from down here uh, so where we need to go now is up on top and see if we can't get on the passenger side above this, remove that heat shield, and get to those bolts that are protruding down from above. Like I mentioned before, this is the driver's side catalytic converter to exhaust manifold mount, and you can see up here. Also, we've got our uh, oxygen sensor, and so um, I'm going to try and remove those nuts from down here. Uh, this has been replaced. I can't tell, can't see underneath the uh, heat, shr heat shroud whether or not there's a, a stud in there or uh, another nut on the other side or whatever. Uh, we may find that as we start to loosen the nut from this side that it, the bolt itself may just start spinning. So uh, we may have to get up top, um, but we'll see. We'll see what they put in there last time. Okay, let's see if we can't get these nuts undone off of this catalytic converter here at the top 15 millimeter and I've got a really long extension with a little swivel on it okay I broke it loose now I wonder if that nut is turning or if the stud is turning along with it let's see Uh, it seems like the nut's coming down, so that's good. Let's try this other one. Got to come from the front of the catalytic converter up underneath, snake it around, and put it on that nut to break it loose. Let's see. Again, I've got a really long extension and a, and a universal swivel on the end here. Well, this one wasn't tight at all. Goodness gracious. Okay, so um, uh, let's see if I can get the light in here a little better so you can see. But yeah, we were able to break that upper nut loose and that lower nut down there. It wasn't even tight at all. So the guy that put this on last time uh, uh, obviously had a bear of a time with those. Before we take those out of there, we're going to go ahead and break loose this uh, oxygen sensor. Hey guys, I'm going to take a, just a quick break here remind you if you haven't done so already please hit that like and that subscribe button it really helps the channel to reach a greater audience i hope you guys are appreciating our content now let's get back to it all right so we need to get to the top of our exhaust manifold so let's get these covers out of our way This side, you guys see that. This side as well. A couple of clips that hold them down. And just pop up. All right, let's see if we can see where we need to get to. Okay, so there, down in there is where we need to get. Got it. This heat shield in the way. This silver thing. Heat shield. We'll have to remove it and then we can get to the top of that. Manifold on the driver's side. Let's see what it looks like over here on the passenger side. Oh boy. Look at all those wires and such in the way. So maybe a little bit more onerous trying to get to it on this side. But we'll, uh, we'll figure that out here. Over here on the driver's side, we've got a couple of things we need to remove to get to the top of the exhaust manifold. Um, first off is going to be this silver heat shield here that I'm touching with my finger. And then also, we've got a wiring harness right here 
it's held on with a bracket uh, right there. There's a bolt. Let me see if I can shine the light there. Let me point at it here. Held on by this bolt right there. It's a 15 millimeter holding that uh, holding that wiring harness in place. So I've got a ratcheting wrench here. We can put on that 15 and break it loose and start to back it out. <clears throat> Once it's broke loose, you can probably turn it by hand. Just enough to get this wiring harness out of the way so that we can remove that heat shield. Okay, so we've removed the 15 millimeter that holds the bracket that this wiring harness is attached to, and now we can tuck that back out of the way, just sort of down there a little bit. You can really see now the, uh, the 10 millimeter bolt there at the top. Put you in focus. There we go. So we'll go ahead and remove that too. Got a long extension with a swivel on it. Again, 10 millimeter. No problem there. Let's go ahead and switch over to our handy little electric ratchet. Make things a little faster. There we go. Nice. Okay. And there's one more. It's going to be really hard for you guys to see, but there's one more bolt right over here, basically uh, holding the top of that heat shield, and it's underneath this uh, this area where we have our uh, dipstick tube, and then the uh, the connector there for uh, for one of the sensors. So basically, I have this extension attached to that last mounting bolt um, for the heat shield and like I said it's up underneath here underneath this sensor okay now that the bolts are out of the way that are holding this heat shield in place we can just grab hold the top of it here and just pull it down and it'll just kind of fall out of the way and now you can really see the bolts here at the top holding the uh, exhaust manifold to the catalytic converter down below. Now, notice that it's it's loose already because remember we took the nuts off down below. And uh, so now we can see that they're bolts. Um, again, this has been uh, messed with before. Somebody put bolts here. I don't think that's originally what it came with, but uh, this is how you get to the top end of the driver side exhaust manifold yeah. so that you can undo whatever is, is necessary on, on your vehicle. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed those two bolts that were holding the, uh, the manifold here to the catalytic converter down below. And uh, this is driver's side done. Uh, we should be able to remove that catalytic converter now, but let's go move over to the uh, passenger side and see what it takes to get to the top of the uh, uh, exhaust manifold on that side. Okay, so here we are, passenger side of the 3.6, trying to get to the top of the exhaust manifold. And you can see the heat shroud down there, that silvery color thing. And uh, as we look around on that, you can see that uh, it too is held on uh, by uh, some 10 millimeter bolts. There's one here in the upper right. Looks like there's another down in there. Um, so at least two 10 millimeter bolts holding it uh, on. Let's go ahead and remove those and see what is next. So with a really long extension and a swivel, I was able to get that 10 millimeter uh, socket onto the, the, one of the mounting bolts for this passenger side uh, uh, heat shroud. And so let's get that out of there. Also, to get that second mounting bolt, again, the long extension with a swivel, we're able to get down in here. Uh, see if I can zoom in just a hair and uh, put that 10 millimeter on that bolt as well. So let's get it out of the way. Now that the two bolts that hold that heat shroud are off, let's see if we can't push that heat shroud out of the way and gain access to the top of the manifold bolts. 
Oh, there it goes. Okay. So the heat shroud fell down out of the way. Now we just need to see if we can see the <laughs> exhaust manifold bolts. Let me see if I can see those. So this side, of course, has got so much going on. It's going to be a little bit hard to tell. But if you look and peek down through right there, you'll see one of the bolts that's at the top of the uh, uh, catalytic converter holding it to the exhaust manifold on passenger side. The other bolt we can see over here from this angle. So there's the other bolt. They're both 15 mil, so we're going to put our long extension and swivel on those and see if we can't break them loose. Okay, to show you guys just how we're going to snake down through there, we got this long extension and a swivel on the end. Let me see if I can show you. There you go, down in there. Got a swivel on the end and uh, extended deep well 15 millimeter because the stud sticks up just a little bit and I think this side looks pretty factory so this is probably how you would have to do it uh, on your stock STS and to get on the other manifold bolt back there uh, same thing I've got this long extension going down and getting on top of that bolt uh, 15 millimeter Okay, so we've got all of the bolts that we could get to from above that hold the manifold to the uh, catalytic converters, uh, both the passenger and the driver's side. So now we're going to go down below and see uh, if that has freed us up so that we can remove the old ones and put in the new ones. All right, back underneath the car, we've got all of the bolts that were holding these catalytic converters in uh, from above, attaching them to the... Uh, Exhaust manifolds removed now. So here on the passenger side, you can see that the uh, catalytic converter is loose from the exhaust manifold. And also over here on the driver's side, similar, similarly, they're loose. So we're going to try and remove them now. I'm going to start with the driver's side one since I already have it disconnected from the tailpipe here. So I'll pull the tailpipe back just a hair. And... Rotate this. Okay, there it is. That wasn't so bad now, was it? All right, we've got a bit of a heat shield here. Okay, it looks like that's integrated. It's also part of the uh, seal that goes here between the cat and uh, the manifold. So we'll have to reuse that as well. Already loose too. See if we can get this thing out here now. Drop it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look at there. There it goes. Okay. Now we got both catalytic converters off. Come look up in here now. What we've got as far as space. See the heat shroud. It's just kind of falling down and out of the way we'll, we'll go ahead and leave that here so it's easier to put back in place all right and on the driver's side over here similarly heat shroud has has just sort of fallen to the side got a nice uh, big open area here for the new one to go in so now that we've got the old catalytic converters out we can compare them to our replacements um, these are obviously a little bit smaller uh, diameter but uh, should work the same so uh, pull the old donut off if it's still good and you can put it on the new one and uh, the new ones come with new of these crush washers that go up top
top here into a little slot and that'll go between your exhaust manifold and here. Here's the driver's side one. Likewise, slight differences in the two, but uh, we will see if they fit up just right. And uh, in order to hold this uh, donut or the ceiling washer in place, I put a little bit of lubricant um, there just to hold it in place. That'll burn off. I'll probably do the same thing with this side. Okay, so here we are on the passenger side, and I found that putting the catalytic converter up in place and then starting one of the bolts by hand from down below here uh, was the easiest way to get it to sort of start uh, remaining where it, where it should be. Um, so just a quick tip for you guys. Again, passenger side, catalytic converter. Got the new one up in place, and I was able to get my hand up in here and start both of the bolts um, coming in from the top, but start them from being underneath the vehicle. So uh, I'll go up top to tighten them with the extension. I just wanted to show you that I was able to bolt it in place, at least from down here below. And uh, that will save you some time and effort, I hope. So on the driver's side here, we were able to slip that thing back up into place and get it to stab into uh, the uh, exhaust manifold with the studs and the heat shroud in place. And uh, just to hold it there, I, I can't really reach up there and put a, put a nut or anything on the other side quite yet. So I've just kind of got it wedged here against the exhaust, which is going to hold it in place until I can get up top there and put a nut on top of that stud. Back up on top now, this is the driver's side, and we can see those studs sticking up from the uh, new catalytic converter down below. And so I think I can reach down in here with my hand and get these nuts started on those studs. So let me do that here, and I'll show you. So sure enough, on the driver's side, I was able to reach just down right in here and get those uh, nuts started on the studs. So now we can switch over to our long extension on the ratchet like this. Get that down in there on it and tighten her up. Okay, now those bolts that hold the exhaust manifold to the new catalytic converter are in place. It's time to put our heat sh shroud um, back over the uh, exhaust manifold. So you can see the heat shroud is still sort of slid down out of the way down there. So I'm going to slide it back into place and get one of the 10 millimeter bolts started. So there we go, just like that, we were able to slide that back up into place uh, we, uh, from where we had it just hanging down below. And I put this one 10 millimeter bolt in it, as we uh, learned from our friends that have uh, experienced this before, that uh, one will hold it just fine for the lifetime of the vehicle. So no need to try to fight with all the others, uh, one will hold this thing in place. Now it's time for us to put our little wiring harness bracket back in place, and we'll be done on this side. Okay, so we got the wiring harness back in place. This bracket is held on right here by this 15 millimeter bolt. I was able to get it started by hand and then snug it up with a wrench. All right, so driver's side up top, we're done. Let's go to the passenger side now. All right, so as I mentioned down below uh, on the passenger side here, we were able to start those bolts into the exhaust manifold. You can see on right through there. We were able to start those bolts from down below with our hand. And so we're going to come up here now and we're going to get on that with uh, this extra long extension that we've got here. And uh, that should allow us to uh, tighten it up. Okay, so passenger side catalytic converter now is bolted in place nice and tight. Um, it was easy to get to those bolts uh, with a long extension up top and now we're ready to put our heat sh shield back over that and I think I'm going to do that from down below here. It looks like I can get to Yeah, it looks like I can get this thing up in place here Okay for passenger side uh, Heat shield. I was able to get it attached from down below. It would have been super easy if I hadn't had this bolt break off on me because I could have just held it on with that bolt and then gone up top. But I was able to reach my hand up in here on top and get that bolt started and I'll do the other one from above. Okay, so not one to skip any steps. I want to show you guys 
the heat shroud on the passenger side. I was able to get my hand down in here and get this top bolt started from above. And uh, remember, I was able to reach down and get that bolt down there started from uh, below. So I'm going to go ahead and get on those with a uh, an extension here and tighten them up. Okay, I've got my long extension swivel, 10 millimeter down here. Tight. Okay, let's get this out and go on and put it on the next one. And back here, let's see if I can do this one handed. There we go. Okay, let's see if you can see. There we go. Down in there now. Tight. Okay, heat shroud is on. So with the heat shroud on, both the passenger and the driver's side tightened in place, everything up top here is done. So let's go back under the car and finish up connecting our new catalytic converters to our exhaust. All right, here we are on the driver's side. We've got the heat shrouds all in place. Everything is tightened up from above. The only thing left is we need to reinstall our, uh, our um, oxygen sensor. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, do the next guy a solid and put a little bit of anisease on the threads of this thing so that it'll come out easier, not seize itself into place. Uh, and that, next game, that next guy might be you, and you'll appreciate doing it for yourself. Okay, so now that we've got the oxygen sensors tightened up, it's time to mate the catalytic converter to our uh, exhaust system. So we're going to... Get on these 15 millimeter nuts and see if we can't tighten them up a little bit. I tighten up just a little bit each side at a time. The way it kind of pulls in nice and even. You want to make sure that this donut is seating inside of the flare of the exhaust system correctly. Back here and tighten this side again. All right, yeah, now we can finish this up by hand. The uh, electric ratchet doesn't have enough torque, but uh, we got her together on this side. So guys, I hope you got a lot out of this. Learning how to do the catalytic converters on this 2007 Cadillac STS. Wasn't too bad, um, but you got to do some things from above. You got to do some things from below. And uh, as with any exhaust work, uh, there's going to be some rusty and some, some uh, difficult bolts to get to. But uh, just, you know, be diligent and you can do it. It's not that bad. Um, if you guys haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. And check out our other videos for more helpful tips and tricks on this car and many others. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless.